Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dungeon Vogue once again. In this video, we are going to be looking at the GM Notes. The GM Notes tool is used to delineate rooms within your maps and also breathe more life and enhance the overall description of the maps your players are going to be navigating through. As always, I've done a little bit of homework and you can see that there are some bubbles with some letters and numbers assigned in them, and I'm going to be showing you exactly how this works. In this video, there are going to be two sections to it. The first section we are going to be looking at is within the editor itself and how to manipulate the GM notes within the editor. And then there's actually a GM notes tab that we're going to be exploring a little bit later on. So first things first, where do we find the GM notes within the editor? Well, we're going to come down here to this book icon. And when we hover over top of it, it says GM notes. When you click on that, a new dialog box appears that you can then begin to add text to. If you highlight text within this box, this new dialog box will appear, allowing you to manipulate the text within the box here. I'll show you a little bit more about how this works when we actually jump over to the GM Notes in its own editor. You'll happen to notice this button down here that says Add to Notes. When you select that, any text that appears within this box will be transported over to the GM Notes section when we get there. So you'll notice up here, that I have the level named. Well, this is to show you what level we're currently on and what you're calling this level, but also this is going to show how levels appear when we go over to the GM notes. First and foremost, you're going on to name your levels. That way, when you come over to your GM notes, everything is more properly laid out and things are easier for you to find. Now, say we actually want to name and number a room. Well, when you select a room using the select tool, you're going to notice that this line up here has a little bit of a break in between. The first section here allows you to number the room. So this is the text that's going to appear within the bubble itself. So if I just erase that, for example, I can then put number two or X, whatever kind of numbering system I want to use. From there, I can actually name the room. And again, you will see how this plays out over in the GM Notes section when we get there. When a room is highlighted, you'll happen to notice that this bubble is also highlighted as well. Whenever a room is highlighted, you can then pick up this room bubble and place it in inconspicuous areas in your map zone. For smaller rooms down here, you'll notice with A4, I actually have the room bubble sitting outside of the room simply because it looks a little bit too crowded when I put it on the inside. So all of my rooms that are separated by walls have been labeled and numbered to correspond to what they are. So you'll notice here actually, for example, that I have several rooms listed as the same number. Well, this is just handy for me to let myself know to remind my players that if they're going into a room that's marked as A6, they're gonna see a very similar description with the same types of resources in that room, the same type of layout, the same type of size and shape. However, for A7, it is separate from the rest because there are some different features in here. So the GM notes is also a great way for you to separate the different types of rooms or group rooms together under the same numbering structure as I've done here. But all this is just sort of on the surface of what the GM notes is really capable of doing. If you wanna delve into a little bit deeper about all the descriptions and tools at your disposal when you're using GM Notes, we're gonna actually wanna go over to the GM Notes proper. So by clicking over here on the GM Notes button, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about these tools up here. They're fairly self-explanatory if you simply hover over top of them. If you're used to using any word processing tools like WordPerfect or Microsoft Word, anything like that, you can do your own little experimentation in there. There is one thing in particular though that I do think is rather cool that I'd like to draw your attention to, and that is this quotation tool. So if I scroll down here very, very quickly, you can see that a little dialog box has popped up. All writing in italics really does 
is just suggests that there is either an additional description or perhaps maybe to add a little bit of flavor, an NPC within your world describes this area in a very unique way, different than how you would actually describe the room on a functional level. So this is a great way to add a little bit of extra flavor and flair to your maps. You can actually use the NPCs in your world to add additional description. You can see here that the descriptions that I had in the dialog box in the editor version of GM Notes have carried over because I have chosen to add them to the notes section. And then we can begin actually figuring out what's going on with both the picture and this new table that has appeared underneath. When we discuss the levels and layers section in the editor, you'll happen to notice that we were able to name all of our different levels. Well, when we're looking at the book icon over here, each level that we created is set up by its name. We can collapse or expand all of our different levels, and the editor here in GM Notes will show you every room. So you'll happen to notice that when I'm adding rooms to the editor over here, I'm pulling from the list on the left. And you'll happen to notice that there are these single walls that I've drawn using the draw rooms tool back in the editor. Well, considering that these aren't actually rooms as they don't have any letters or numbers assigned to them, I don't really want them to appear on my list as it's going to start confusing and compounding my ability to find the rooms I'm looking for. So there's an easy way to filter these out. If we go back to the editor, we simply look at the walls that we want to eliminate and when we select a room we can select the wall that we want to get rid of and if we come down to our GM notes here now you'll remember earlier that I mentioned that this add notes button is what essentially removes this text box from the editor well more importantly what it does is it actually prevents anything associated with both the object that you're highlighting and the text in the box itself will not appear in the editor. So what ends up happening is you can eliminate both the obstruction here as well as the text box from the directory entirely. So what you're seeing over here is the header for the room and that is taken over by this section over here in the editor. So if we click on a room, let's just go back to A1 for example, this area up here becomes the header that is going to be used in the GM Notes editor. After a room is selected, we can highlight it and drag and drop over in this blank Word document over here. And then a table underneath it will automatically be populated. It's important to note that when you add rooms to the editor, the description that I have in the dialog box for the tap room will appear up here above the header, as well as down here underneath the table itself. Within the table, it's going to tell you which level that you can find the room on, the appeal or what textures the walls and the floor are, so you know what textures you're using on this room. Any objects that are contained within this room are also labeled. Any hidden objects, you can select those or you can actually just manually type them in. So here I've had the hidden latch leading to the larder, like so. Any doors that you have or any windows are listed under this section. If for any reason you actually have a door that needs or requires a key as well, it will actually appear in bold and says needs a key. Any traps that you have on the map, you can also manually input those as well or it will pick up trap assets as well. Any NPCs will obviously have to be manually input where you can have your bolded stat blocks that you want to use. Same thing with your monsters. You'll happen to notice that when I selected a box here, another dialog box can appear. Well, this just allows you to change the fields within the box just a little bit more. You can change the cell style or the table color. You can actually just remove the table entirely if you need to get rid of this if you've accidentally moved rooms out of sequence. You can actually remove the table in the image and then put a new room in its place. Now, one of the main reasons why you can manually add things into this table, as in additional traps or NPCs or monsters, 
is that once an image gets created in the editor, as in ported over from the side and placed into the editor and this table appears, any new images that get placed on the map in the actual editor itself will not carry over, which means you will manually have to go in and input those new images or delete the room, delete the table, and reinsert the image in its entirety. And that's simply because that as you're adding rooms in to the GM notes editor, the system is only recognizing the most recent image captured. So if you actually make changes in the editor as far as this image is concerned and then try to reinsert it, at that point the table will update so long as there's no pre-existing table or information there. So if I were to simply just delete the picture, let's say, well, all that table information is still there. So I would have to eliminate the table as well so that when I reinsert the image, all of the new information and new objects and layout are now properly updated. So let's just see, we'll do another practice here just to see exactly how this operates. So we're gonna come over here to A3. I'm gonna highlight that. I'm gonna drag and drop it over here to the editor. And you can see that long bar on the left-hand side over here indicates that it's going to create a new header. Drop that down. You can see after dropping the image down here that the text box or table automatically appears. And then I can begin manipulating it. If you need to create a page break, you can do so in case you want to add in another table or image underneath. When you click on a blank space of the document, a blue cross will appear. When you click on that, you can create some shortcuts. You can insert a table, an unordered list, an ordered list, or you can create another horizontal line, much like that orange horizontal line right there, which would be great if you need to create another room. You can easily just use that as either a page break, a visual page break, or a place where you can drop a room to continue editing it. So once all that's done, and you need to quickly reference where you're going in the actual document itself, you can come over to this bookmark tab here, and this works like a table of contents. So every header acts as a separate section over here. So if I'm down here in my stables, but I need to jump back up to the tap room, I can click that and it brings me back up to that section in the document. Once all your GM notes are ready to go, you can select to print them and then you can print to your eight and a half by 11 standard letter paper or however you wanna configure your notes. So just one piece of advice, uh, like everything in Dungeon Fog, most states will remain saved in this version, in the version of the map that you're working on. So in this case, I've gone ahead and actually added the tap room and the kitchen prior to starting this video. So those sections are retained within the GM notes area, this editor here, after you leave. And there you have it, folks. A very, very quick rundown of how the GM notes can help improve and enhance the overall description and breathe new life into your maps. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down in the comment section below on all of my videos. Feel free to hit me up on the Discord server. Send me a direct message if you want. I'm fairly active there. So feel free to drop me a line if you have a question or just want to chat. Thank you very much for watching again, guys. And I will see you all in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.